So very excited today to welcome back a guest to Off the Podium. We've been doing a few of these, bringing back guests on the show to hear their progress as we approach the Paris Olympics. We first spoke to him back in November of 2021. He was months off his debut Olympics in Tokyo, where he finished 17th at those Olympics. And since then, gone on to great success between that interview and now, including a silver medal at a World Cup event last year. Also finished 13th in the World Championships in 2023 and is, no pun intended, gunning quite well towards his second Olympics when the men's 25-metre rapid-fire pistol at the Paris Olympics. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the show, Sergei Yevgleski. Sergei, first of all, welcome back to Off the Podium. Thank you very much for having me, Ben. Really appreciate it. It's it's exciting to have you back, mate. I need to actually, the first burning question I've been dying to know since that last interview, um, Zelda, how did you go? Did you get through it? Uh, did you manage I, to complete it? Uh, are we all honestly, good there? still have not completed it. It's shocking. Ah. Re- I've been planning to replay it. Like, I want to finish it from start to end, and I still haven't finished it. It's ridiculous. Right. Okay, I mean, you've been busy, I guess. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, a couple of World Cups here and there, but it's still no excuse. Zelda, yeah. you got to game. You got to do, yeah. With gold medal around your neck after Paris, just retire and go on to a life of playing Zelda, right? That's, uh, you know. Exactly right. I think that's a a dream retirement right there. Don't need to repeat your mother's, you know, 20,000 Olympics. You can just be like, yeah, two's fine. Gold medal. That uh, that was Lego building. Have you been doing Lego building as well? Because I know that was another thing you were doing at the time as well. Yeah, yeah. I've done a bit of Lego building. Um, I've uh, who was it? One of my pa- uh, my partner actually got me the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, from nice Avengers and Finley uh, Infinity War, and I got that. Built that. Um, I got some knockoff uh, Legos because I couldn't afford the real ones. Got some <laughs> knockoff ones from the shopping center, and there was a Spider Man and uh, Black Panther in there, which was pretty cool. And um, got this real, like, not a real one. It's a knockoff as well, but it's like this big red Ferrari type car. It was, um, it was good. It was good to build. It took, uh, took me the whole of quarantine after Tokyo actually to build it. It was insane. At least you got some entertainment. I'm sure those knockoff ones is probably like Spider Person and Black Leopard or something like that. So you know, <laughs> not to infringe on copyright or something along those lines. But I mean, in all seriousness, okay, since we last had you on, as I said, you've gone on to some some great things. I mean. I, I don't know where to begin kind of on those sort of things. I mean, obviously, uh, how, how are you feeling right now, I guess? A month away or so from, from Paris with everything that sort of happened between then and your, your current form and things that have happened since we last spoke about two and a half years ago. Yeah, look, it's been really good. I uh, reflected a lot after Tokyo. It was um, it was a difficult time because I wasn't proud of my performance, but I was proud of the fact that I gave it my all. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things when you, when you start thinking about it, you start questioning yourself and you start thinking, you know, did I give it my all? So um, after Tokyo, I'll be honest, I kind of struggled a little bit. And, you know, going back into COVID in, uh, in Melbourne as well with all the lockdowns, that was a bit of a struggle as well. Um, but, you know, I've bounced back since then. I've gotten into training, won a, got a silver medal at a World Cup, uh, performed well at other World Cups. Two points off world champs. Uh, I was two points off the last World Cup a month ago, actually, as well. So it's been going good. And the form leading up to Paris has been um, has been really good. I feel really confident with it. Which I have to say, having just re-listened to the chat that we had, and I know you re-listened to it as well, I couldn't tell from back then that maybe that confidence and there was sort of some disappointment after Tokyo. That was, what, only a couple of months after, and you were sounding very, like, positive and sort of upbeat and everything along those lines. So it's kind of interesting to hear you say that maybe that that mood wasn't necessarily there after the Olympics a few years ago. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Like, I think I always tried to, you know, I didn't want to bring people down and tell them, you know, oh, no, I'm, I felt pretty awful. Like, you should always speak your mind. And you should always, you know, reach out for help. But um, I was kind of trying to just remain confident and remain positive and because I had my support network and my close friends tell me like, you know, you did great. This is your first Olympics. There's so many more to come. And, you know, the fact that you went through all this and got the result that you got, you should be proud of that. And like in the end, I, I was proud of that. And that's what I have to keep reminding myself. And um, yeah, look, I've moved past it now. Tokyo is nothing but a positive experience for me now. And um, I'm just, yeah, really excited for, uh, for Paris, hopefully I, um, you know, keep going well with the selections and everything and hopefully it gets announced that I'm on the team and we can go from there. Well, I want to just, you brought it up, may as well ask on that. Where are we at right now? Because, uh, you know, we're obviously recording this uh, end of May, air in sort of the middle of June. Uh, where are we at right now, Sergey, so in terms of you, your feet on that Qantas jet heading over to your second Olympics? 
Yeah. So um, let's just say after the selections, I did really well. I was in a really good position. Um, you know, we've got the quota spot in my event. Um, I finished top of the leaderboard. So now it's just a waiting game. I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. Just a waiting game, which, you know, you and I were talking a bit off air about sort of how that works and everything. But like, do, do you have to put that in the back of your mind that there's a selection looming over you because you've obviously still got events, you've got World Cups, you've got training and everything. And how do you put that in the back of your mind? Like you just got to go job normal knowing that, well, you know, am I going to get selected or not? Like I've kind of, I've ticked all the boxes, but come on, hurry up, give me that ticket. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I think you got to just have that confidence in yourself. You know, um, like if something can happen where I'm not selected. However, I'm just going ahead because it's out of my control. You know, I've done the selections. I competed, um, the best of my ability, and you know, I did what was required. So now I just have to, you know, go forward, keep training, keep up that momentum, and you know, have the mentality of I'm, you know, winning a medal in Paris, and I'll be there. And having a World Cup medal on in your back pocket now like obviously adds a little bit more to the confidence because you can take it up to the Mm. best in the world and i'll touch separately on the world championships in a sec in a second but like just how does that add to the confidence and can you give us a bit of a sort of a rundown of of what that was like to come away from that event in jakarta with that medal uh, a little over a year ago yeah so it was um it was honestly an incredible event to be at it was event when i was Coming into the event, I was really confident in myself. I was training well and I was I sh- was shooting really well. And actually, right before that event, I went to Europe with my partner. Um, it was uh, we did a two month trip in Europe. We went to a bunch of countries, and um, it was it was a beautiful experience. It was so good to be there. And going to Jakarta, I just had an amazing mindset, and I was just so thankful, so happy, and um, you know, just had like so much gratitude for everything in life in general. So then when we uh, stepped into Jakarta, my training was really good. I was really confident and was able to come away with the silver medal. I can imagine though, like we, we talked a lot about that mental aspect last time we had you on, of course, but like to just relax and, you know, have some time away with loved one, Europe, you know, that sort of stuff. I mean, that helps clearly a lot to kind of go there. So, I mean, how... With that experience in mind, do you think that's something that you would, as an athlete, you know, recommend to other athletes that maybe sometimes all it takes is a couple of weeks off with your partner, with family member, even by yourself to just kind of, you know, reset and then go into, you know, an event and bit clear mind going into it? I think with shooting, especially being so mental, I think it's actually really important. I mean, I'm not saying everyone, hey, let's go do a European trip before every World Cup. Uh, but I am saying like, you know, you have to really be in a really positive mindset and you have to be loving what you're doing in the moment, loving the sport and loving what's happening in the moment. You have to be present with it. So I think, you know, going to Europe was a really good break for me, especially, you know, post the Olympics, um, post COVID, it was just amazing to go there and to come back feeling refreshed, feeling strong. And I actually really got that hunger back when I left for Europe, I was doing a bit of training over there here and there, like a bit of gym, a bit of fitness. But um, when I got back into Australia, I, first thing I did was go straight to the range. Like I just felt so confident and really hungry to, you know, shoot a gun and go perform. I'm looking here at that result from that World Cup. Now uh, you, and I'm going to butcher pronunciations as I always do in this show. So please step in and correct me. So you are, uh, you lose to Nikita Churyukin of the, of Kazakhstan, who if I'm looking here correctly, three in the world right now. And you beat Jong Ho Song, who, if I'm not mistaken right now, is the current number one in the world, Sergey. So, uh, I mean, how's that for a confidence booster to look back to say that not only did you get a silver medal, but the current world number one going into Paris, you beat him. So you know that, hey, come on, Jong Ho, uh, I've, got your, I've got your measure in a, in a month or so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's the beauty of shooting. It's You can have, like absolutely anyone in the final it's literally who's best on the day you can have world number ones you can have 60th place in the world win the final but it doesn't matter in the end it's whoever's performing the best whoever's in the best mental state whoever's uh in the best physical state they'll win the competition this is why i love shooting and why i love like target sports at the Olympics, shooting and archery because it is one of the like exactly what you're saying you can see anyone sort of on the day do it and to me, I, every time I watch it, because let's be honest, as most Australians do, sadly, I'm only really watching it during an Olympic Games every four years or a Commonwealth Games when it's bloody there. But it's it's a case of I'm very confident as an Australian that we're going to have someone there because we always seem to have someone just pop up. And 
it just it just happens. So uh, you know, me looking at a world rankings right now, going like, "Cool, you're beating these people." It's sort of kind of obsolete that in these events it it can happen. Although I'm looking at the podium though of of you guys standing on the podium, you're the only one kind of smiling, at least in the photo you shared on Instagram. <laughs> so uh, I mean, uh, you know, maybe bronze, uh, uh, yeah, world number one. No, this isn't good, but uh, you're smiling. Yeah. You're the only one smiling. Well, yeah, I guess, um, you know, maybe Kazakhstan are a bit stricter. Maybe they expect more than gold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. go, no world record. This is not good enough. Like a yeah, gold, exactly. go back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, funnily enough, like, I think maybe it was just bad timing because I know um, Song, who I'm actually really good friends with, he was over the moon um, with that World Cup. He was so happy to win a bronze. And he's only been going up from there. You know, I think before that World Cup, he was... Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was barely making the Korean team, actually. Like, he was really struggling to make the team, and now he's, you know, world number one. And that's that's also another beautiful thing about shooting is the longevity with it, as well as, you know, you can have up and down moments, but once you're up, you're up. The I'm looking at the photo, too. You're, you're holding – I don't even want to guess what that is. It kind of <laughs> just looks like they've got, like, a cardboard cutout with a stick, but I'm yeah. guessing it means something to Indonesia. What is that? I honestly, I have no idea. I thought it was like a mini fan or something, um, but they kind of just gave it to us as like a little souvenir thing as well, um, which was lovely because it was like one of my favorite experiences because they were so kind there as well in Indonesia. They, um, like all the volunteers, all the people working on um, on the range and all the people like, you know, presenting the medals, all that stuff. They were just so kind and lovely. So, you know, whatever they wanted to give us, I'll take it. Hands hands wide open, you know. Well, we're, we're always big fans on this show during the Olympics when you get, like, obviously you get your medal, but then you often will get, like, a mascot or you'll get something. Obviously, our Beijing winter athletes, you know, they got the Bing Duen Duens, which were a hot commodity when it came to mascots. But I'm hoping that you get a Frieze on that medal. Like, if you can see Frieze behind me, of course, a great Paris yep. mascot. So, you know, that's kind of a thing. But I'm, I'm looking, I mean, it seems like that, whatever it is they've given you, maybe it's the logo because on the sort of the artwork behind, they've got, like, that as almost a separate thing. So I, yeah, it's I, actually behind me in my room right now. There is a logo on it. And I think they've yeah. kind of put a bit of Indonesian inspired theme onto it as well. So it's got the, uh, the shooting logo, the IWSF logo on it with, um, yeah, I think it's got some like a tiger and uh, a boar or something on it. As you well. might have to unblur your background because I can't like, we, but, like <laughs> the thing that I notice when you actually move your head, you see that sombrero, which you mentioned in the last, we, <laughs> yeah, did, we so didn't do video interviews back then, of course. So, you yeah, know. so that's actually from uh, from a Mexico World Cup. But yeah, there you go. go. There we yeah. go. Look at that. With an Eiffel Tower there as well, if you don't mind. Got a little bit of an Eiffel Tower, yeah. And there's an Infinity Gauntlet right behind that Eiffel Tower. And uh, look, at, and the medals on the wall. For our for our audio listeners right now, head to our YouTube to check out this video <laughs> one. But I like because this is what I like seeing that level of display. Because we had uh, Amar Desi on a Canadian restaurant, and his whole room was like a shrine to him from his parents. But I always like asking what you do with your medals. Often it's in a sock drawer or something like that. But that's that's what I like. So okay, there you go. Yeah. You know? So it's um it's you know I, when I wake up, but you kind of face it. And um, yeah. the red one there is the Indonesia World Cup uh, yeah. medal, and then around it is uh, my Junior World Cup medals as well. Which um you know I'm trying to spot the Commonwealth Games medal. I can see the Commonwealth Games accreditation. Oh. Commonwealth Games medal is actually in the display box uh, ah. on shelf as well, just on the on the left of it. So I've got that in the display box. So I figured I should keep that one a bit safer. I see uh, the accreditation because I've got my Commonwealth Games accreditation. We're, 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 we're twinnies there, Sergey. Yeah, That's the only thing that I can be, compare you to. So, um, And actually, when we're on my Commonwealth Games show, I thought I'd wear Gold Coast 2018 today to, uh, you know, celebrate I, your success. I so, should have wore my, uh, my gear uh, as well. But unfortunately, I've uh, probably... Practically doubled in size since then. So, and also, I should mention the day that we're recording this. Sergey's on a plane in about eight hours to Germany, so you probably have a lot of this stuff, like Australian gear and stuff, in a in a bag, re- yeah, ready to go. Yeah, it's all in my luggage. It's all good to go. Ready to go with that, which is just saying. I'll touch on that in a moment. One thing I just actually wanted to ask: when it comes to world rankings in shooting, is it like tennis, golf, like where you're looking at that and it? means something like does that when you go to an event like maybe you know a ranking will put you in a certain spot in a in a qualification or something like is it is it important to have a world ranking going into a shooting event um yeah leading up to these olympics actually it really was because um for paris olympics they only um i guess to be an eligible athlete in the sport in shooting um you have to have a ranking point and you know a ranking point is basically when you get uh in the top 50 ranked at 
any World Cup endorsed or any IWSF uh, endorsed event. So, uh, you know, World Cups, World Championships, you know, if you rank in the top 50, then you'll get the ranking points to qualify for the Olympics. Um, I was able to do that back in 2022 uh, when they implemented the rule at the 2022 World Champ. So I was kind of off the hook there. Um, but yeah, world ranking definitely does mean something, you know, being in the top 10, top five, top one, um, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to be in, but sometimes uh, you don't go to all the world cups. So you lose some points there. Um, you know, if I went to all the world cups last year and this year, then I probably would have a higher rank, but in the end, the Olympics is the main competition for me and it's the main goal. So, you know, if, if I do go to Paris and um, if I'm successful there, that's the only thing that'll matter. Still looking at this list, though, I mean, you're 25 in the world at the moment. But, I mean, to say that you're 25th in the world at something, like, that that's pretty cool. I, I don't think I've even remotely touched the top 25,000 of something in the world, <laughs> Sergey, let alone top 25. So, I mean, that's something you must look at and go, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an awesome feeling, you know. Like, 25 is actually probably the lowest um, I've been for a while, um, but that's, you know, because – lack of attendance and you know, stuff like that. But um, it, when you are world ranked, it's an awesome feeling, you know, to go to competition and to do the best you can and then come out of it being, you know, amongst the world's best in the world rankings. It's, it's a great feeling. I'm seeing here that you're above the nearest uh, British shooter. So that's fine. You're above all the American shooters. Uh, I can't even see any Kiwi shooters on here. So you got them. You got the main ones covered. So I guess yeah, I like exactly. I got the Commonwealth guys coming. You, you, got, you, you got them covered. Actually, just on that, before I touch on the World Championships, so I know last time we obviously talked about the fact that there was no shooting in, in Birmingham, sadly. So you couldn't go there and go one better with your, your silver from the Gold Coast. What was that like watching the Commonwealth Games in 2022, knowing that you should be there, but this stupid thing about shooting not being there, I can't be there. Yeah, it was um, it was like a mixed feeling. Like it was awesome to see Australians compete. Like I love watching multi sport events, especially you know going for the Australians and going for like underdogs in other events, and it's just awesome. Um, but it was at the same time, you're right. It was like man, like I wish I was there. Like I wish I could continue my form and to compete and you know be in Birmingham, win a gold medal there. Um, and it sucked having that as well. But it is what it is. You know, you and, can't, can't complain too much. And I guess it's kind of in that odd place with the Commonwealth Games. I mean, I know we talk about the Olympics and, you know, your mind's not on a Commonwealth Games, of course, Sergey. But, I mean, 2026, we kind of don't have one right now, do we? So, um, you know, uh, I guess I'd ask the question, are you glad that shooting's back? But we don't bloody know, do we? Because we don't know if there's going to be one. Yeah, look, it's um that was a real, uh, to be honest, like, that was a real blow to the stomach. Like, that was a real tough uh, thing to swallow. So, um. It was tough. It was a yeah tough pill to swallow finding out that it's not going to be a Commonwealth Games in 2026. I think a lot of athletes were affected by it. Um, you know, a lot of people were getting ready for it. And because uh, the thing is that like 2024 Olympics for me, I've been preparing for this like since before Tokyo. You know, that, that was a plan in my head. So for a lot of people, 2026 Commonwealth Games, they've been preparing it for it, you know, not three, four years, but for 10 years maybe. So um, it, it was really upsetting, really, really upsetting. Hopefully we can get something done about it. Um, but I'm right now, I'm just focusing on next two months, next six months, you know, Paris is what's in my head right now. That's the only thing I'm thinking about. We'll get you on after you get the gold and then we can worry about, you know, the Commonwealth games exactly. at, yeah. at that point. Uh, World championships though. So 13th, but you are only one point off a shoot off that would have taken you into the final. So, you know, that, close tell us about that experience and, and reflecting on that now sort of what about eight or so months later and, and kind of everything that happened there in Azerbaijan yeah look it was an amazing experience like not only to um so if you kind of break it down like we shoot our halves over two days so first half one day second half the next day my first half was a bit poor it was I can I kind of came into the competition and I did what I felt was good result wasn't too good and the coach just said you looked like you weren't in the space you looked like you were there shooting but you weren't mentally there you didn't give it that that oomph that's kind of what he said and I look back at that and I kind of reflected that night and I said yeah like you know I need to show a bit more aggression I need to show a bit more um drive for the next half and that's exactly what I did I kind of just went forward and i like I drove, I kind of was just like angry and I used this energy to perform in the second half. And obviously, you know, a little bit disappointing that 
uh, that the result didn't get me into the final, but I was so proud of the fact that I managed to, you know, go from 30th place or whatever it was to 13th and to be, you know, knocking on the door of the final. And I look back at it thinking no matter what, how you go in the first half, you have to go into the second half. You have to go into the next day with a new mindset and new goal. And the match is never done. The match is done when it's done, basically. I, I'm very intrigued on how you describe that because if I am to list sports where I were to think of using aggression to get you over the line, mm. shooting's not one that would come to mind. How does yeah. being more aggressive in shooting help you improve? I guess like, I guess I don't mean it in a literal sense of like being angry. I guess for me, it's more like, you know, when you're running, you can run with a really slow pace and kind of just be wandering or you can use the word aggression and kind of just, you know, give it that all, give it that power. And that's kind of, like you almost use like like your inner like inner tiger you know inner lion inner animal to kind of just perform the best you can and i think that's kind of what i use the word aggression for it's not you know not like an anger like i'm not you know grabbing a tennis racket and smacking you're not going gangster like you know with a gun like you know all right this is is now now like you know like that way with a gun Um, i think aggression with a gun i'm going oh shit this is getting real look (laughs) out (laughs) i I knew as soon as i used that word aggression i'm just like that's probably the wrong choice (laughs) you just start shooting your competitors no 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 see that's how you go from 30th to 13th because 17 of them are dead (laughs) exactly um but no like for me it's that's i think that's another thing about the mentality of sport you kind of give yourselves these these trigger words you know um i say i say the word control and for me that's you know pulling the trigger holding the gun lifting the arm up and i use the word aggression and i when i say the word aggression it's like all right get that like inner energy and put it to good use like give it that oomph and that's kind of how i go about it when it comes to you know my sport which I can, it's, it is those words though that like every athlete in every sport has a way of doing it. You know, it's yeah, sort of exactly. like what that's going to work for you, that's going to get you over the line. Like I'm, I'm a big Formula One fan and, you know, a lot of people who have watched it in the past, say with a Lewis Hamilton, his team engineer would come over the radio and go, okay, it's hammer time. Like, and then, you know, that's that's yeah. go time for Lewis Hamilton. So for you, like to use those kind of words, like that, that's fascinating that that kind, kind of word. But that, that must give you then a confidence level, Sergey, that like, off the back of that performance that, yeah, okay, the first half might have gone to plan, but you can then take that on board. And net right now in the lead up to Paris, I'm assuming that you can use that and knowing that it worked last time and use that to your advantage going into a second Olympics. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny you say that because um, it's something I've learned recently. There's a, um, once you go through a match, once you go through a competition, you have to almost, I'm not going to say forget, but you have to move on from that competition and then go on to the next one and be present in that next one. Because I've learned from many experiences that when you try to replicate the past and you try to replicate past like what you did in the past, it's not going to work out the same for the next competition because you're a different person to the person that you were two months ago. You have a different feeling. Your body's feeling different. You're in different conditions. So um, a big thing I've been really learning about myself and learning in the lead up to Paris is to be present. And uh, that was a, something that I learned actually recently, like majorly in uh, in Rio in our final qualification competition earlier this year, is that you have to be present in the moment of what's happening. You can't be thinking about the uh, the post match interview, and you know you can't be thinking about that podium thing, uh, that podium stand, you know, getting the medal because like you thinking about it is not going to give you a good result right now. You have to be present in the moment and take control of what you're doing in the moment. And shooting, that's a major thing for me. Which makes my next question difficult then, Sergey, because like it's sort of what's that mindset going into a second Olympics, you know, shouldn't let's just say when you get uh, picked, it's not should you be picked because you've still got events as we know between then. Like I guess it's that tricky notion of, can you really look that far ahead to an Olympics when you've still, you know, got to A, get there and B, compete beforehand to make sure you're in that best mindset ahead of a second Olympics? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like for me personally, um, you know, if I do go to Paris Olympics, it's um, like I accept the fact that, yep, I'll be competing there, but whatever my body's feeling in the moment, whatever I'm feeling in the moment, that's what you accept and that's what you're, like you're in that present. So, now I've I'm like like you said before I'm on a plane to Germany in about eight hours and I'm now focusing on that competition. That's my next one. You know that it would be great help for Paris. It'll really put me in a good position and um in good form. 
uh, before Paris to, you know, shoot in a major event before the games. However, yeah, I think like what I just said before is he's got to be present in each moment. I still got to ask a question though. I still have to ask this question going into Paris when you're there, let's be positive when you're there, yeah. is the goal a medal? Is that what you are going there for? 100%. I've always, you know, with my background, with my family in this sport um, and growing up in this sport, it's, it's not enough just to be at the games. It's um, like everyone is, everyone at the games is there to win. I don't think there's anyone there that's just there for a good time. I don't think there's anyone there that's just there to say they've been to an Olympics and that's it. You know, I think there's a lot of people that are there to win. And um, for me, winning a medal and more specifically winning the gold medal is the, is the end goal and is the end dream. Like that's what I've been working for. I, I know it comes across as a dumb question when I ask an athlete going to the Olympic Games, are you there to win a medal? I don't expect somebody to turn around and go, nah, man, I want to get 27th. Like it's, <laughs> I, I, I get it. But the reason I think it's important to ask that question, particularly to someone like yourself going to a second Olympics, if we were having this interview before Tokyo, of course you're going to say, Ben, I want to win a medal. But I'm sure realistically a first Olympics is a different mindset than a second Olympics when you've got so many things now that – you know what to expect. You, you, you've you gotten the uniform, the accreditation, the media interviews, like the, everything that comes with an Olympic Games versus a regular competition. You've got that part. You know what to expect. Now you can focus way more on the competition without those extra distractions that you maybe weren't ready for. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because Tokyo was such an interesting experience as well. Like, you know, being like a COVID Games, like it was very – secluded you know a lot of the stuff we missed out on in the village and stuff um from what mum's told me in past experiences as well um but it's also interesting that you say um like first olympics like being realistic and stuff it's like i still had the mentality of going to tokyo that if i do my best i can win um but i think back then i was trying to be a bit more humble and i'm not going to say that that affected my performance or anything however i will say that now I I'm still trying to be humble, but I'm really I'm trying to be a bit you know, be like confident in myself as well. With these I think you just like this is what I when we've had boxers on recently. Like one thing I admire the most about bo- boxers are going to come out and go, no, I'm winning gold. Yeah. I'm kicking your ass. Like, I want more athletes in more sports to be like boxers. So so this is your opportunity to right now. If you want to be like a boxer, just get here and be like, no, I'm coming for you all. I'm gonna. This is gold. Get get ready for this. Oh, I don't think I'm that kind of guy, Ben. I actually, I, I, I can't even say it. I can't even say the words, you know. I'm I'm there to do my best, but my best is a gold medal. So that that's what I'll say. But uh, yeah, you le- it's interesting. You learn from past experiences all the time and especially in shooting, but you, it's almost like you can't learn until you've done the experience and until you've, you know, you've finished what the event is. If you've, if you've fallen over, you learn how to pick yourself back up, but you can't learn to pick yourself back up until you've fallen over. So it's a weird cycle. It's it's I, interesting. I get it. I like to go to our guests every now and then. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the thing that I, I did a bit of research going into this because it wasn't something I really touched on back in our last interview. So as we know, you got 17th in Tokyo. And as we said, it's an event that Australia has never won a medal in, in, in the men's side of it. Uh, it actually was the equal best ever finish by a mm. shooter in that event by an Australian. You tied Bruce Quick, who got uh, 17th in Beijing and Athens. So you can say that you are the best ever finisher at an Olympic Games in the men's 25 minutes. So, you know, we want to, you to win the gold. We want you, we, you're going to. Of course we know you are. But if you get anything better than the 17th, Sergey, you can at least leave Paris and go like, hey, I, I am the best ever Australian male in that event. So, uh, you know, there, there's just something in the back of your mind. If there might be disappointed if the medal doesn't come, 17th or better, you, you're going to come away as uh, the best Australian performance ever in the event. Yeah. Yeah. And like, honestly, like, like hearing that actually does like, you know, put a smile on my face because it's, it is an achievement. Like, and, and I think people have to take any achievement they can get. So I think um, that is definitely an achievement. And Bruce Quick is an amazing shooter in Australia. He's, um, you know, he's won, I can't even count how many go, uh, Commonwealth Games medals he's won. I think he's the third most decorated Commonwealth Games male athlete, potentially, maybe I'm not too sure, but like he's, I know he's definitely up there and um He's been in the sport for years and years in Australia and he's such a uh, big contribution to the Australian shooting community. So to, you know, be on the same level as him, it's, it's a great honour and it's a great achievement. 
quick count 14 I can see here medals at the there, Commonwealth there Games. Not That's, bad. No, I've only got one, so he's got 13 more on me. So, so far. So far, I've you've only exactly. got one. Let's, but, uh, let's see if 2026 happens. Let's it, see if that one goes there. Exactly. But it's actually interesting going into a bit of the history with Australia in the sport because – you know, we touched on the fact that shooting's been an Olympic. I think only once shooting has not been in the Olympic Games, and, and this event, the 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 rapid fire pistol, has been there basically in every Olympics except for like two of them. And Australia actually didn't have a representative because I was thinking like Paris hundred years ago. How did we go hundred years ago? We we didn't have an athlete hundred years ago. The last night was in Paris. So according to my research, we had to go to nineteen fifty six at home in Melbourne to we finally had a male athlete. In the 25 meter rapid pistol, Johnny Maitland got 28th. Peter Paps got 35th, whose brother Michael Paps then went on to finish 31st in 1960 and 19th in uh, 1964. So our history only actually starts in 1956 in this event. But the other thing that I found interesting, actually, Sergey, with this, that it has been a mixed event in the past. In 1968, women could compete in this event because women don't have a rapid fire pistol event at the Olympics, do they? Yeah, no. They, they, so they have an event called Sport Pistol, which is a little bit different, um, but it's with the with the same type of gun and same caliber. It's right. you know, same distance as well, twenty five meters, and it's a twenty two caliber pistol. Um, theirs is a little bit different, um, but yeah. So yeah, men have the rapid fire, women have the sport pistol. And why is that? No one can answer it. Like that's that's a weird thing because in the air pistol they shoot the same, you know, sixty shots. It's just men versus women, uh, men's men, women's women. Um, but women always just had sport pistol. Men had the rapid fire event. I think hmm. I think other European countries have had rapid fire events before, um, and like in their own competitions. Uh, but yeah, I'm not too sure why it's been like that. I've never really asked the question to be honest as well. Like I know with sport pistol, um, when you're in the junior, uh, like category, when you're younger, um, junior boys, junior girls, they all shoot it together as well. And it's a, it's an event I used to love when I was younger as well. Um, but yeah, then, you know, you transition into the senior categories, you drop shoot, you drop sport pistol and you start shooting rapid fire. Um, I'm not too sure. It's interesting. It's interesting yeah. Particularly when we sort of now, particularly with Paris being, you know, the, the first real equal games in terms of men yeah. and women representation. Generally, we're seeing a lot of the sports are kind of doing that. Although having said that, shooting, at least on the outside, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, it does seem like a sport where you could easily just have men and women always going like an equestrian. Like it's just it's just mixed or is it not that yeah. simple on the outside? Um, it's so rifle, for example, when they wear like the big suits and have like the long rifles, um, in the last few years, women have been shooting much better than the men. Like the, the world cup cutoffs, the women are higher. The final results, the women are usually higher. The top scores, women are usually higher, um, in, for example, shotgun and pistol. Um, the women's scores tend to be a little bit lower than the men's scores, um, it's hard to answer why there's a lot of different theories behind it. Um, you know, if you look at the air pistol scores, uh, eighth place, which is the cutoff for the final tends to be lower in the women's scores and does in the men's scores. However, the top spot usually is pretty much the same. So it's interesting why, um, mm. but yeah, there's a lot of different theories behind it. I'm not too sure to be honest. Yeah. Fascinating kind of digging through the history of it. Uh, <laughs> fun fact for you, a hundred years ago at the Paris Olympics, uh, America won gold, Henry Bailey, Won a gold medal. Uh, There you go. Ahead of the great Swede, Wilhelm Kahlberg, and Finland took a bronze. A hundred years ago, Lennart Hanulius. Uh, How how did the Finns go in shooting? You got much competition from the Finns Uh, anymore? uh, Not in the pistol, but in the rifle. One of my close friends, his name's uh, Alexi. uh, He's a world champion in the events that are in the Olympics, but then in events, uh, he's medaled at the world champs in the Olympic events as well. So he's right. he's one of the, he's like top three or something in the world. So he's very good. I actually, I, I mean, this sounds like a bit of a cliche. We had, we had Ali Weiss on uh, about a year or so ago talking about American shooters. You kind of think, oh, Americans are going to be great at shooting, right? But I mean, uh, actually, since Henry's gold in 24, you've got to go to 1960 when William McMillan won a gold for the US in the 25-meter rapid pistol and America have not won a gold since. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny, like, um, you know, for, for many different reasons, a lot of people always ask me like, oh, you know, Americans probably like the best well to this and i'm like no they're not that like they're, they're good like don't get me wrong there's definitely some good shooters out there and a lot of them i'm friends with so uh don't mean to bag them out but um aussies are way better like yeah. i'll just I'll just be straightforward you know aussies are way better 
there's that confidence. We like yeah. it, right? Particularly when it exactly. comes, comes to the Olympics. The other thing too, um, so the, the shooting 100 years ago, not in the same venue this time around. So the, the shooting's actually uh, not in Paris. We're about, uh, what, two, three hours drive south in, is it Chateau? Is that how you say Chateau, it? Chateau, yes. I'll tell you what, tell you what, Ben, your pronunciations for words is spot on. My name, you've nailed it. So as I listen, I practice. You have no idea if I didn't practice, I'd be coming on going like uh Sergei I of Golovsky Giggy. Like, you know, I have to practice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you've done very well. And um you're right, it's in uh in Chateau. It's uh in their uh national training center for the shooting team, but they're obviously, you know, doing mass- massive uh, upgrades, massive renovations there. So um and it's interesting. These Olympics, I've noticed a lot of different events are just spread out across France. Like mm almost call it just like the the france olympics because i know the the soccer is in um and i'm probably gonna say this wrong it's in lille like where the soccer stadiums are as well surfing's in tahiti um yeah. like yeah it's all spread out around sailing's like, marseille yeah. like at the very bottom like yeah no it's 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 very spread out which is which is very unique and With, even though they well, sort of yeah. i can see the olympics transitioning into like more of a country thing rather than a city thing because the, the talk, like I know with Germany sort of have put their hand up for about 2036, a lot of that is kind of like, I think like the Southern Rhineland Olympics, you know what I mean? And then, I mean, even like Milan Cortina, we're going to be seeing um, the sliding track, I think is in Austria technically because they're not going to build a brand new one. They can't use one for Turin. Um, the 2030 Winter Olympics are the French Alps, you know? So yeah, you're right. And even even Brisbane, if it happens based on what's going on right now, uh, we got Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, you know, everything sort of spread yeah. between. So, you know, it's it's the model of the future. So, yeah. you know, I know you talked about up uh, your, your homeland of Belarus before we're saying Minsk could be a bit just be- the Belarus Olympics. Just, you know, yeah. once they get over some certain things that are happening right now, then we can get yeah. there, right? Like, once, you know, uh, once tension settles and they, um, everyone's... Once that little thing yeah. clears up, um, then <laughs> po- possibly it could it could go that way. Have you have you shot at the at the centre like there that you that will be used for the Olympics before? Uh, in, in Paris is what you mean? Sorry. Yeah. 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 In, uh, in no, I actually haven't, um, in Chateau. No, I actually I haven't. love saying that name. Sorry. Now Chateau. Chateau. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember I couldn't pronounce it properly and I was like, Oh, something to do with chocolate, chocolate. Roux. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, but no, I've never been there. Um, I've know a few shooters have been there. They had a competition there a few years back as like a trial. Um, unfortunately Australia couldn't make their way over there, but, um, yeah, I've only heard good things as well. So really excited to get there. Which again, I know we're, we're touching on planning for the future and I know that's sort of something yes. that you're not really, you know, focused on. But like, I mean, when you look at that and you're three hours out of Paris, your event's obviously kind of like in the middle of the schedule. So it's kind of, it's not the beginning, not the end. Like, do you then kind of think to yourself, well, I'm going to still want to go up to Paris and check stuff out. I know you're like a basketball guy, maybe see Patty and your mates from the elevators. Like, I mean, like, do you sort of look at that and try and balance it a little bit where you can experience things that you couldn't do in Tokyo, of course, because of COVID? Yeah, for sure. Like if I, you know, if I don't utilize that, I'll be uh, kicking myself. Uh, I definitely want to like, and that's, that's kind of my mentality with any competition. I love to, you know, explore the cities. I love to, you know, if there's events happening in other cities, I'll go check out the events, you know, it's, um, it's especially the Olympics. Like I'll 100% try to find time to, you know, probably sneak into the other events because there'll be so many people there. I'll have to have to try to sneak in. I've got to touch on that though. Cause a few things before, before we let you go, Sergey. um, you, you touch on the culture, everything along those lines. Meat pies, um, four and twenty, the official pie of the Australian Olympic yes. team, and uh, uh, hopefully welcome. that means you're welcome that- to everyone out there because I am still backing that. I started that. I am the man that's uh, that's got that going. I, I, I love the video that you posted where you kind of shared the fact that when you did that, they they quoted that then the Australian Olympic team were tagging it and everything along those lines. So. Basically, what we're trying to say is that when you're there in the village and should they send a bunch of pies, which I'm sure they will, that that you can be chowing down and Paddy Mills is going to come up to you and be like, you know, man, I, I need these meat pies. And when the boom yeah. is in gold, it's thanks to you. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you know, if, if Paddy Mills, Kate Campbell, like <laughs> Harry Garside, Peter Bowl, you know, if they want to come up and get my autograph, take photos of me and be like, you know, you're the man that's you've made this happen, then, you know, it is what it is. Like I'm, I can only be humble about this experience, Ben, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I've made this happen. But it must be fun because I, I know we talked on your sort of your TikTok, your Instagram little videos, which is still fantastic, by the way. But like to have then 4 and 20 send you a pie. To be like, we want you to try <laughs> this pie, the cheeseburger pie. Like you're getting branded sponsorship right now. So like you can tell us your secrets. We need to learn to do this on this show. 
<laughs> Honestly, um, just just film yourself doing silly things like eating a pie while training, and that's <laughs> that's what happens. Like I remember when I made the very first video in Sydney. Um, we were training before before one of the selections, and um, you know, it's one of those things. Like it's always awkward to set up a tripod and film yourself with training, and I, oh, you want to post more on social media, and um. I wanted to make like a serious video of me training and I'm like, that's not me. Like, you know, it's not, not what I do. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get a pie for lunch. Went and got up to the canteen, got a pie. And I'm just like, you know, I'll just record this, throw it in there as a random me eating a pie. And then, then 420 commented and I was like, it's the biggest pie brand in the world. Like why not just elaborate on that? I, the thing that I'm hopeful for, should they be there? I know that team Australia got a lot of love in the village because of the barista. And uh, yes. Bruce is back, by the way, for Paris. Spoiler alert. But I wasn't much of a coffee drinker back then, but now I'm a big fan. Thanks to the barista. But like, do you think that this could take off, that the pies then all of a sudden take off so that all these sort of other athletes from other countries are not only trying to steal our great coffee, but they're trying to steal our great four and 20 pies? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I would definitely not be surprised. I mean, what's a classic, you know, classic servo breakfast, a pie and a nice coffee? So it's... It's not you know, people talk about Australia not having food culture, but they, they oh. don't know a servo meat pie yeah. and iced coffee, right? Bloody idiots that they are. Like, they, they, like honestly, and you'd be the same. Whenever you're overseas and people ask you, like, what food do you miss? And it's, oh, Vegemite and shapes and Tim Tams, <laughs> but stuff you can easily get. I'm missing dim sims and i'm not talking dim sum or dumplings like i'm talking you you take away five for two dollar trashy dim sims i'm wanting my crappy australian chinese food because like like when you're drunk and you want it a kebab like the, the the food that nobody can send you over in a box right the amount of times I've gone overseas and, you know, finished competition. So I will, you know, go have dinner with a few friends, one thing leads to another. And by the end of the night, I am just craving a big, fat, greasy HSP. I'm not mm. sure if you guys call HSP as well, um, but in Melbourne, we call it HSP. No. Um, it's the chips, kebab meat, barbecue sauce, chili sauce, garlic sauce. I don't know what we call those. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's funny, actually, I had one of them the other night. Like you, you, I think you commented on my post. I went up to the Melbourne Victory Grand Final up in Gosford and my my dinner. By the way, great game. Yeah, shame about the result. But uh, uh, my dinner was exactly what you just described. So Yeah, I know some places in Australia call it a meat box. Some uh, some places call it. It was a meat, that's that's what they have it here in Seattle. So that's what it was called. But as a Tasmanian, I don't know what we call it down there. Just. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure, but HSP, Halal Snack Pack, one of the greatest mm. foods of all time. And, you know, there's some, there's a place, there's places in Germany. Germany, like, they do this thing where if you get, like, a little, those, like, Chinese takeaway boxes, mm-hmm. throw some chips in there with the kebab meat on top and then yep. pour the sauce on top. And I'm like, all right, that's close enough. But it's in a Chinese takeaway box. It's like, you know, what are you supposed to eat? Chopsticks with this? Like, it's yeah. it's interesting. I, I know that um, there's a place down in, in Hobart. And I'll give them a shout out. They might sponsor Dave's Noodles. It's just literally just like noodles, meat, yep. you know, different variety of just like, you know, Asian style cooking. And I know Noodle Box exists in the States. It's a brand. I know there are other Noodle Box places that you can get a similar thing. I have never found anywhere in the world somewhere that does it like Dave's Noodles does. And yeah. it's just, it's, and you always have those places. Like when I lived in New York, bagels, right? Like that's the thing. And that you come here to Australia and bagels are fancy. It's like, oh, he's a $15 bagel with avocado oh. and a latte. It's like, dude, no, just go Got to it. fucking a corner place in New York, get a $4 bagel, a $2 coffee. That's all I need. Yeah, exactly right. And that's, that's, that's all you need. Yeah. It's, 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 that's all you need. One other thing I want to touch on. Sergey, before I leave, and 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 I, I I'm I'm this is why I, I'll be honest with you. I was a couple of minutes late to starting this interview because I found something fun that I want to play for Let's our go. audio listeners as well as our video listeners. I'll even include the video. Uh, you experienced something recently. You went bungee jumping. Oh um, yes. And I have to say, <laughs> this is one of the funniest things I've ever watched recently. I want to play this right now for our audio and our video listeners. Now, a warning. There may be some language in this. Um, how, many, how many beeps do you have? Uh, I, I, I don't beep it. So, uh, you know, but uh, just a, a warning. If people hear the swearing on this show and maybe think I'm excessive, what you're about to hear is a little bit excessive. So let's let's hear how uh, Sergey went when he went uh, bungee jumping recently. Three. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Ah, oh. oh, fuck me. 
regret your decisions yet? Yeah, yeah. regret it like the, the day I booked it. <laughs> On the photos, it looks so much smaller. Oh, fuck me. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Ah, fuck. Alright. Hey, Sammy. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, fuck me. Hold on. All right, all right. So, how? What's the best way? Just should have had like a Red Bull or something this morning. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right let's do it. Three. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, just no countdown. Let's, let's do it. Ooh, fuck me. Sorry, Aaron. How did you? How did she do it? Just straight away. Ah, fuck me. All right, let's do it. Can you just jump off. Yep. Fuck me. Start stomping the chest. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Three, two. Fuck me. Get angry at him. Ah. All right, ah, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck you! Oh, fuck! Jesus Christ, oh my God! Woo! Holy shit, fuck nuts, oh my God. Oh, fucking net. Oh. All right, do shit my pants, which is good. Oh, yep, sorry, I'm yelling. Oh my God, oh. Hey, Sammy. Ah, oh, fuck me. All right. Let's get some bricky. <laughs> now, two things quickly there, Sergey. First of all, glad you didn't shit your pants. And uh, secondly, yeah. what did you get for bricky afterwards? I I've been dying um, to know. <laughs> oh, just uh, a pill to calm your heart rate down, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ended up getting a very nice breakfast. Um, so oh, I forget the town that we were in, um, but we were in New Zealand because my partner, Sammy, she's from, uh, she's from New Zealand. And uh, we're doing like a little uh, tour there. And... Um, this place is kind of like a resorty area. There's like a bunch of nice spas and everything. And they had this bungee jumping and it's not, not the real famous one that you see in TikTok, like the, mm. the one. one. Yeah, mm. that one. It's not that one, but it's still like, it was 50 meters, which is like, doesn't sound too bad, it's but too high. yeah, it's still high. Exactly. Right. And like I said, in the video on the pictures, it does look a lot smaller and you look at them like, yeah, easy. And I don't remember how long that video is. I probably cut it down to 30, 40 seconds, whatever it is. Um, but the whole video is a solid like three to four minutes. And then my partner, Sammy's, hers is about the whole thing, about 28 seconds. <laughs> and she, just, like, she got up there and she's like, yep, okay. And then the guy's like, three, two, one. And she's like, yep, cool. And goes. And she's smiling the whole time. She looks great. And I'm just going down my... My face is red. I feel like my head's going to explode. I'm yelling the F word like no tomorrow. I and didn't hear it once. Don't we talking about? <laughs> I showed my parents and my parents were so disappointed in me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And they're like, we never taught you to swear like that. <laughs> and I'm like, you try be 50 meters up and jumping off the bridge. It's harder than you think. And, um, Oh, I don't even know what I was saying. I was stomping my chest like in Wolf of Wall Street, trying to get myself <laughs> pumped up, trying to get that aggression going. Wait, wait, but was this something? Because I think you say there that you booked it. Like, so this wasn't just like a on the day your partner's going like, let's go. So you were like prepping for this. It. And I was more keen than she was. She was like, oh, I'm not sure. And I'm like, nah, like, come on. It'll be good fun. Like, we'll get like a make a day out of it. Because they had like quad biking there as well. And I was mm. like, there's some quad biking, do a bungee jumping. It'll be awesome. And um, she went first because she said that, like, you know, if I wasn't going to do it, then she definitely wouldn't have done it, like, like confidence-wise. And seeing her do it, I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, I'm so ready for this. And you look down, you're like, nah, fuck this. Like, <laughs> jump off. And the guy's counting me down, and I'm just like, no, shut up. Don't count me down. Just <laughs> hey. And then he's telling me as well, it's like, you know, like, People are waiting. Like there's there's, there's a lot of people, <laughs> and I'm like, you got no pressure, mate. Up. Just fucking do it. We've got other bookings, <laughs> and like uh, that's the thing they do. Like like you know, ten minute bookings or whatever it is because they expect after ten minutes that the person would have jumped down already, and um. I'm just looking down. There's water down there. It's freezing cold as well. And I'm just regretting all my life choices. But in the end, you know, I went down, yelled out, like felt great for doing it and I'll never do it again. So It's yeah. always the anticipation, isn't it? When you do it, you're like, I'm glad I did it, but but never did it. That's the one time I'm sure you've never said that you were an Olympian. You didn't want people to know that you're this Olympic athlete. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not me. Like, no. I think it was like Aaron or Aaron, I think his name was. He was like, um, like I was like, I told him like, oh, shut up, Aaron. And that's why I said like, oh, sorry, mate. Like, like I was just so, so embarrassed. And uh, yeah, if you told him that I was an Olympian, they'd be like, this guy, like, are you serious? Wow. 
crazy. And then you get podcast hosts bringing it up to embarrass you just uh, <laughs> a, a, a little bit back more. Now, I am a little bit embarrassed of the swearing, um, but uh, <laughs> I, it, it's being the present, being the moment. It is what it is. Should you and your partner ever have children and they ever see that clip, they'll be learning some new words. Um, yes, which, yes, they will be. <laughs> you know, and uh, hopefully what, they'll never see it, but we'll see. Exactly. Or well, they might listen to this and then uh, perhaps they will look it up a little bit more. Uh, Sergey, it's it's an absolute pleasure to to have you back on. We're going to say best of luck for Paris because we know you're going to be there. Obviously, by the time we release this, we expect that hopefully the team will be released soon. So we'll be able to so that. We'll share it on our social medias. And, and of course, we're going to get you back on the show afterwards. Because actually, one thing I haven't even shown you to, for inspiration, our show mascot, Cherry, Yes, I've uh, I've seen this on uh, socials as well. It's fantastic. It's how, awesome. I mean, how inspirational would he be to have next to you in a shooting range? He'd be great. Like, I would love for him to be right next to me and uh, be my, my moral support there. Got, got his gold ready to go. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're getting some pins made up, so we'll, we'll get you one. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you wish to grab a T-shirt, we're going to have some T-shirts up very shortly as well that you can – Love it wear there and everything but you know cherry and you can even sit on him like we found this with our boxes they're keen to maybe sit on him in the corner in between yes, rounds that's yeah so well, I, I would sit on it in between rounds as well like you know i shoot my first round go sit down like cherry what am i doing wrong tell me talk to me about smile you talk about getting aggressive like that's just you know a smile yeah. of just you know good luck yeah Get no, there I, I look at him like Cherry's been through a lot. He's been aggressive. Like he's got the bandages. He's got, you know, he's got the shoes right there. He's busy. He's been through a lot. He, he's an, he's an inspiration right there. And thrown across a room and, and damaged, you know, <laughs> just that's that's where he's at. But we, we like hearing that. But no, we will get you back on inspiration and everything along those lines, mate. But it's always a pleasure to have you on the show and uh, best of luck for Paris. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.